سلام بچه ها به کانال من خیلی خوش اومدین اسم من مریمه و من معلم زبان فارسی هستم امروز یک درس جدید داریم Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel uh, For those of you who don't know me, my name is Mariam and I'm a Persian language instructor uh, So we have a new lesson out, uh, it's about understanding sequencing events uh, guys, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, uh, I would appreciate if you could subscribe because um, it really, really gives me motivation to move forward and to make more lessons. Uh, all right, now let's just start the lesson. Before we start this lesson, there are a few, uh, a few points that would be helpful for you to understand this lesson better. The first one is knowing the Persian alphabet because no transliteration is provided in this lesson. This is what I mean by transliteration, use, use, using the English alphabet to use similar sounding letters in Persian. Uh, because at this point, uh, you already kind of need to know the alphabet. Next one is it would be very, very helpful if you uh, if you are familiar with some grammatical term such as preposition, gerund, clause, conjunction. Knowing these grammatical terms and how they function, it will help you understand this lesson a lot, a lot easier. And the other one you need to know is that uh, there will be a lot of examples in this lesson, and most of them will be in present tense and past tense. So you need to know these two tenses. I have also some examples for subjunctive and present perfect, but I'm briefly going over them. So you don't need to know subjunctive and present perfect. Uh, but just so you know, if you know it, then it would be it would be helpful, but you don't have to. And the last one is like, if uh, you, it would be helpful if you are familiar with the verbs related to routine and everyday life. For example, to wake up, to wash your face, to brush your teeth, to have breakfast. So um, there is uh, a link in the description box uh, that, that will take you to Quizlet. You can find the verbs related to routine there. Also at the end of this lesson, and there's like a glossary of the common verbs that are used in this lesson. Very briefly, let's go over what we are going to learn in this lesson. So sequencing words are divided into two groups. First, we are going to go over this group. You can see it here. We're going to take a look at a few examples. Uh, and then there are some important points that you need to know for this one. And then we are going to take a, take a look at the second group. Here is the second one. And then we are going to take a look at a few examples for the second one. And then there are two essays for this lesson. Uh, we can see how the sequencing words um, work in like in an in a essay. And then you can get some practice there. Sequencing words in Persian. Overall, in any language, uh, when you're learning like a new language, it's very important to learn the sequencing words because then you will be able to talk about a, a series of events in relation to one another. The two main functions of, this, uh, of using the sequencing words are when you want to talk about your day or your daily routine or like what you did on the weekend. Or the other main function is uh, when you want to tell a story that has a sequence. For example, this happened and then that happened and then something else happened after that. So these words are very useful and uh, you will be able to link uh, the events to one another. So that's what we are going to learn in this lesson. So for this lesson, I categorize the sequencing words into two, uh, two groups. The first group we are first going to go over before and after because before and after are the two most common sequencing words. And then we are going to go over some other common sequencing words, for example, first, then, later. So we are going to start with this one. Use of before and after in Persian. So before in Farsi, the generic term for it is قبل and pish is used in the formal language. After is bad and pass is used in the formal language. Both before and after in Farsi, they function in two different ways. They function as a preposition and they function as a conjunction. If you do not know what I mean as a preposition versus conjunction, I'm going to explain this in the following slides. Don't worry. 
now let's just go over this generic terms we can pronounce so we can pronounce them and then uh, maybe you can write them down and then we are going to i'm going to give you more explanation with examples so before now when it functions as a preposition it becomes qablas so we said the generic term is qabl but then we need to add as to it when it's used as a preposition qablas badas in the formal language pishas passas now when it functions as a conjunction is not qablas anymore it becomes qablas inke badas inke in the formal language before is pishas inke and after as a conjunction in the formal languages passas inke in this lesson we are going to focus on the less formal terms why because we are uh, we are trying to learn about uh, we are uh, learning these words to talk about routines and everyday stuff so we do not need to speak very formally so we are just going to focus on the less formal term all right now we are going to start with before and after as a preposition and then i'm going to explain to you what it means all right let's see what we mean by before and after as a preposition so there is one um, universal rule when it comes to prepositions in all languages, in Farsi, in English, all other languages. And the rule is that prepositions are always followed by a noun, always. Or a gerund. And what is a gerund? A gerund is also a noun, but is a form of a noun that is derived from the verb. In English, how do you form a gerund? The gerund is formed by the present participle of the verb uh, plus ing. For example, here, studying. Studying here is a gerund and it comes from the infinitive to study. So uh, what is gerund in Farsi? Uh, how do we form gerund in Farsi? The gerund in Farsi equals the infinitive form. We don't have something like English, you add something to something. The infinitive form can also be used as gerund which in this case is dars khondan. So dars khondan uh, as a verb, it means to study. As a gerund, it's like studying. All right, let's go, uh, let's go over this example now. So before studying, I took a break. To study dars khondan, to take a break, estarohat kardan. The Farsi is qabl az dars khondan estarohat kardam. So here it would be wrong of me to say Qablas Dars Khondam because if you conjugate it, then it's not a gerund anymore. It's not it's not a noun anymore. It turns into a verb. And it's wrong to have a verb after preposition. So we keep it as the infinitive form. One more time, Qablas Dars Khondan Estarohat Kardam. Now, uh, the, the now next one, after studying, I took a break. So it's the same example, but uh, before is now switched to after. Bad as dars khondan, estarahat kardam. So qablas changed to bad as. It's the same rule. Again, we have a preposition and we need to have a gerund or infinitive form after that. It would be wrong to say bad as dars khondam, estarahat kardam. All right, and now just again as a reminder, the a little bit more formal form of qablas is pishas. So pishas dars khondan estarahat kardam. A little bit more formal form of badas is pasas. So it would be pasas dars khondan estarahat kardam. So we covered before and after as prepositions. Now let's see what we mean by before and after as conjunctions. Now I am going to use these two examples to explain before and after as a conjunction and let's start with after first and then we're going to go over before. So here uh, we want to say after I studied I took a break. So this example is very similar to the one that we just did earlier. The difference is that uh, that one was after studying I took a break. So this is a gerund and there is no subject, no verb in this clause. But here, after I studied, I took a break. So now we have a subject and we have a verb in this clause. So that's the difference. So therefore, after here is not is no longer a preposition anymore. It's a conjunction. After as a conjunction in Farsi is bad as inke. 
So بعد از این که من درس خواندم استراحت کردم. So we need to have a subject and we need to have uh, a verb. Even if we do not uh, bring back, the subject is in a bracket because it's optional, but still, just because it's not there, it doesn't mean that there's no subject. It could be implied. But we do have a verb here in this clause, so we definitely need to have a subject, whether implied or not. So now let's go over to before. So before I studied, I took a break. So it's the same rule here. We have now a dependent clause. So before here is a conjunction. So before in Farsi, as the conjunction is قبل از But there's a trick here that you need to know. قبل از will trigger subjunctive. So قبل از اینکه من درس بخانم استراحت کردم. And this is the difference between قبل از and بعد از اینکه. بعد از اینکه does not trigger subjunctive. Here the sentence, um, we have past tense. So you see both of them, both of the tenses are past tense. But here, for before, this one in English is in past, this one is in past, but this one is always present subjunctive. It doesn't matter uh, um, what the other clause, um, the tense is, but the clause and the verb in the dependent clause would all, will always be in present subjunctive. If you don't know what subjunctive is, uh, you haven't learned subjunctive yet, don't worry about it. Once I get to subjunctive, I will explain this point again. We covered before and after as a conjunction too. As you might have noticed by now, before and after in English is easier and more straightforward than Farsi. In Farsi, it's just all the bit tricky. Um, because in English, before, whether they function as a preposition or as a conjunction is the same word. Before, before. The same with after. After, after. But in Farsi, they are not the same. They're different words. And this is a common mistake that students make. I'll explain that in the following slide. Now let's go over a very common mistake. So you look at the sentence, بعد از بیدار شدم صبحانه خوردم. So what is wrong in this sentence? Is this sentence correct or is it incorrect? So the answer is this sentence is wrong. It's incorrect. Why? Because we have badas, which is a preposition, and then there's a verb after that. Bidar shodam. So prepositions are never followed by a verb. They're always followed by a noun. So basically, if you wanna if you wanna correct this sentence. We need to change bidar shodam to bidar shodan because bad as a preposition now needs to be followed by an infinitive, which in this case act as a noun. So you need to say bad as bidar shodan subhane khordam. Or I know it's easier for the students to use the conjugated verb rather than the infinitive form. So it's okay if you want to use a conjugated verb. But then you need to use bad as inke. You need to add inke to bad as. Bad as inke bidar shodam, subhane khordam. So pay careful, uh, careful attention to this, word, uh, to this rule because it makes a huge difference when you use it correctly. Now we are going to go through a series of important points that you need to know for before and after. All right, now let's go over the first point. Uh, I have two examples here. I'm going to use these examples. The first one, usually before exercising, I warm up. To exercise, ورزش کردن. To warm up, نرمش کردن. معمولا قبل از ورزش کردن نرمش می کنم. So the point that here you need to know is that ورزش is a noun and it means sport. And کردن is in a bracket because we actually don't really need to say it. If we say it, it will make it redundant. It will make it something unnecessary that it's just, it makes it repetitive. So we can also say معمولا قبل از ورزش نرمش می کنم. But in English, for this one, you cannot do that. You cannot say, usually before sport, I warm up. You have to use the gerund form. Let's do, let's do the other example too. Yesterday after shopping, we returned home. 
So to shop خرید کردن. To return برگشتن. دیروز بعد از خرید کردن به خانه برگشتیم. So the same here too. کردن is in a bracket because we can only say خرید. And خرید by itself it means a purchase. Something you buy. So I can say دیروز بعد از خرید به خانه برگشتیم. But in English, it's not, it's not natural to say that. You cannot say yesterday after a purchase or a shop, something like this, we returned home. So this is um, the difference between some of the infinitives or gerunds from English to Farsi. Most of the times, uh, with most of the infinitives, that the verbal element is kardan and the nonverbal part is uh, it's a noun. With most of them, we can drop kardan. But again, it's not a 100% rule. It applies maybe to 85% of them. So you can use it as a general rule. Now let's go over to the next point. After losing my wallet, I called the police. بعد از گم کردن کیف پولم به پولیس زنگ زدم. Just an explanation here. In Farsi, we call to someone. In English, you just call someone. In Farsi, it's a prepositional verb. We need to call to someone. That's why you see be here. Be. All right. The point that I want to explain in this sentence is, so this is the preposition. This is, um, this is the noun. And this is another noun. If you remember in the lesson about uh, ezafe, genitive or ezafe, I said that in Farsi, if there's two nouns next to each other, if these two nouns are modifying each other, they need to be connected with ezafe. So here in English, you are saying losing my wallet. So this noun here, my wallet, is modifying losing. But in English, there's no such thing as ezafe. By just being next to each other, they're connected. But in Farsi, we need to connect them with ezafe. So if I say bad as gom kardan kife pulam, if I don't pronounce ezafe, there's a disconnect in the sentence. It's like these two nouns are not connected to each other. That's why ezafe is very important. But again, ezafe is always implied. You will not see it, but yet you need to pronounce it. I only put it down here because you guys are learning. But you shouldn't get used to seeing as of it. That's why it's important to learn the rules so you know where as of it is so you can pronounce it or you can use it. Uh, the next example, after learning Spanish, I traveled to Madrid. بعد از یاد گرفتن اسپانیایی به مادرید سفر کردم. So the same rule here, یاد گرفتن اسپانیایی. All right, let's go over to the next point. So here we are saying, before sitting on the chair, I cleaned it. قبل از نشستن روی صندلی آن را تمیز کردم. So the point that I'm trying to explain to you here is that when we have the noun, like the infinitive, the noun, and then this is the modifier, sandali. When these two are already connected to each other with a preposition, then we no longer need to have as of a there. So it would be wrong of me to say قبل از نشستن نه روی صندلی because uh, there is already the preposition روی it's already connecting these two. So as of a is not needed here. And just remember this as a general rule every, any, every time we have a preposition, any preposition, Nothing is connected to that preposition with ezafe. This is a common mistake that learners make. They, uh, they connect whatever is before the preposition. They add an ezafe and then they say the preposition. So no, you see a preposition and whatever is before that, we never connect it with, an, with ezafe. Let's also take a look at the next example. After talking to my friend, I changed my decision. So, بعد از حرف زدن با دوستم تصمیمم را عوض کردم. In Farsi, we talk with someone. In English, you talk to. In Farsi, we talk with someone. The same rule applies here too. So, 
بعد از preposition حرف زدن is the infinitive and then با دوستم so I'm not here saying بعد از حرف زدن نه با دوستم نو no اضافه بعد از حرف زدن با دوستم تصمیمم رو عوض کردم so the preposition با here is already making a connection between this noun or this modifier and this noun All right, let's go over to the next point, which is about uh, conjunctions, like before and after as conjunctions. After I take my dog out, I feed him. So, بعد از این که سگم را بیرون میبرم به او قضا میدهم. So to feed is به کسی قضا دادن, like to give food to. It's a prepositional verb and we give food to someone. So the point that I want to explain here is that in English, you have the conjunction, you have subject, and then comes the verb, and then the object. But in Farsi, we have the conjunction, subject, if it's a personal pronoun, we don't need it, although it is implied, and then comes the object, and then the verb. So the verb comes at the end of the clause. Remember that. Which, because so far we've learned that the verb comes at the end of the sentence. Yes, it comes at the end of the sentence, but it also co comes at the end of the clause if the sentence has different clauses. So the verbs come at the end of each clauses. So the same rule applies here too. Let's go over to the next example too. Before I packed my suitcase, I checked the New York weather. So قبل از اینکه چمدانم را ببندم هوای نیویورک را چک کردم. In Farsi, uh, بستن is to close. In Farsi, like to close your suitcase. It means to pack your suitcase. So the same rule here too. So we have the conjunction and then we have the direct object and then comes the verb. But in, far, in English, you have the conjunction, the subject and then the verb. So remember this. And then... Uh, it, I, uh, I want to explain something else, which I, which I already explained earlier, but just in case you missed it or you need a little bit more explanation. So, bad as in care does not trigger subjunctive. Whatever tense you're using for that center, you use that tense. Past, future, present. What does trigger subjunctive is only قبل از in care. And it doesn't matter what tense you're using. For example, this is you're talking in the past. Because you are saying, I checked the New York weather or I packed my suitcase. So you are using a sentence in the past tense. But still, this will be in subjunctive. And only the verb in the same clause where the conjunction is would be in subjunctive. Not this one, but this one. This verb belongs to this clause, to the same clause as قبل از So it will trigger subjunctive. All right, so we finished before and after. Now let's go over the other common sequencing words and we're going to see examples for them. Let me just pronounce each one so you know how to pronounce them. So, aval, bad, bad, or sepas, qabl az an, bad az an, badan, qablan, dar akhar. All right, now in the next following slides, we are going to see a few examples for each one and see how we can use them. Now let's use some of the sequencing words and let's see how to make a cup of tea. I know all of you guys know how to make a cup of tea, especially when it's with like a tea bag, but it's an easy example. So let's just go with that. All right, Chetor is how yek fenjan chai dorost konim. Yek fenjan chai is a cup of tea. To make. In, in case you're wondering what tense is that, this is subjunctive. All right, let's start with the first one. First, we boil some water. To boil is jushandan. Jushan, present stem. Aval, mehdari, ab, mi jushanim. Mehdari here is some. Next, we pour the water in the cup. To pour, rihtan, riz is the present stem. Bad, abra, در فنجان میریزیم. Then we put the tea bag in the water. To put گذاشتن. گذار present stem. سپس چای کیسه ای را در آب میگذاریم. 
Kise is like a pouch. So in English you say tea bag, in Farsi we say um, tea pouch. After that we add some sugar and milk. بعد از آن شکر و شیر اضافه می کنیم. Finally, we enjoy the tea. So enjoy is as cheesy lezat bordan and cheesy is the tea. So in Farsi, we enjoy of or from something. Don't, the preposition is very important. Dar akhar az chai lezat mibarim. Let's also see two examples with the before and later. So the example here says, I've been to this restaurant before. So what is this before here? Is it a preposition, a conjunction? What is it? So before here is an adverb. And when before is an adverb in Farsi is qablan. So in English, it's a lot easier because either a preposition, conjunction, or an adverb, all three are before. But in Farsi, that's why it's important to know what function are you using. Are you using a preposition, an adverb? So, so then you have to use the correct one. So in this case, we cannot use qablas. We cannot use qablas in ke, but we need to use qablan. And also, the adverb qablan most of the times triggers two uh, specific tenses. It triggers either past perfect or present perfect. So you see in English, I've been, I have been. So this tense is present perfect. Uh, if you if you are learning Farsi with me, with my YouTube channels, um, sorry, with my lessons on YouTube, then we haven't covered past perfect and present perfect yet. So don't worry about it. We will learn it later. Once I go to that lesson, I will explain this again. This is for those of you who already know this uh, two tenses. All right, so here, man qablan be in restaurant rafte am. And in English, uh, the adverb usually comes later, like at the end, but in Farsi, it comes uh, earlier because we need to end the sentence with the verb. The next one, they will let us know later. So here, to let someone know about something or to inform someone is khabar dadan. And it's a prepositional verb. We inform to someone. Be kasi khabar dadan. Khabar is like news. Dadan to give. So it's like to give news to someone. So literally. Anha badan be ma khabar midahand. Okay, we finished the grammar part. Now it's practice time. All right, now it's practice time. So for this lesson, I decided to come up with two essays. So you can see the sequencing uh, words there because in usually my previous lessons, after I teach grammar, then we have around 10 sample sentences. But for this one, we're talking about sequ sequencing. So it makes more sense to have essays there. So the first essay is very easy. You just need to know a few simple uh, verbs and words. But for the second one, uh, it will be very helpful if you know uh, the verbs that are related to everyday routine. All right, so now we're going, we are going to start with the first one. All right, so the first essay and the title is Shambe Shab. So Shambe is Saturday and Shab is night. And uh, the pronunciation of Shambay is a little bit uh, weird because there's a noon in there, but uh, the pronunciation is very subtle. The noon is really, we don't say Shanbe, it's just it's pronounced very subtle. So it's more like Shambe. And uh, for this essay, you need to know past tense. So past tense, in case you don't remember, so we need the past tense of the verb, which we remove noon from the infinitive form. Uh, at the end of every infinitive uh, form uh, of the verbs in Farsi, there's a noon. We remove that and then it needs to be conjugated. And for the negative, we just attach a na to the past tem. All right, now let's just start the essay. So for this exercise, you can either uh, read with me and practice your reading skills or you can... Uh, for example, close your eyes or you can look away and you can listen to it and practice your listening skills. And now we are going to start with the first sentence. Diruz shambe bud. 
من و دوستهایم برای شام به رستوران رفتیم. ولی قبل از آن چون هوا خوب بود به پارک رفتیم و یک ساعت قدم زدیم. بعد از آن خیلی گرسنه شدیم پس به رستوران نزدیک پارک رفتیم و شام خوردیم. غذا خوشمزه بود. بعد از اینکه شام خوردیم به سینما رفتیم و یک فیلم جدید دیدیم. Alright, so here uh, is a translation. If you need help with some of the vocab and the verbs you didn't understand, so you can just take a look at the translation. Now I'm going to go over the sequencing words. So here, uh, in this sentence, ولی قبل از آن چون هوا خوب بود به پارک رفتیم. So here we have قبل از آن, which is an adverb. Here we have بعد از آن. بعد از آن خیلی گرسنه شدیم. Uh, this is also an adverb and we can replace that also with either بعد or سپس. This is a slash. So either this one or this one. Uh, which then the meaning changes to then. Uh, so I can also say بعد خیلی گرسنه شدیم or I can also say سپس خیلی گرسنه شدیم. And then uh, another uh, sequencing word is this one, bad as inke. So this is now a conjunction. So we need to have, um, we need to have a full clause. We need to have like a verb in the clause, the same clause. So bad as inke sham khordim be sinama raftim va yek film jadid didim. Also, I forgot to mention the translation is a combination of like uh, idiomatic translation and literal translation, but it's pretty clear. Let me know uh, if you have any questions in the comment section about the translation or any question, like any grammar questions, and uh, I'll be happy to help. Now, for those of you who are new to Farsi and you need more uh, help and you need more practice, so we can also go sentence by sentence and then we can review some of the uh, verbs and then uh, maybe some grammar points so you can get more practice and hopefully that will uh, answer some of your questions. Now let's go sentence by sentence and review more details. So the, here you can find the, lit, uh, the more idiomatic translation and then in color blue are the more literal translations. So here, uh, let's start with the first one. Dirus Shambe Bud. Bud comes from the infinitive Budan. And we said uh, for the past tense, we remove Nun from infinitive. So we remove Nun and then we need to conjugate it. But was, uh, there is no conjugation for third person singular in the past tense. That's why we are just left with the past tense. Let's go over to the next one. Man va dost hayam baraye sham be restoran raftim. So raftim, the infinitive is raftan. And here the subject is man va dost hayam. So it's ma, we. So the conjugation would be raftim. And then uh, remember for baraye, there should be an izafa here to connect bara, the preposition baraye and sham. So baraye sham. And then this preposition B uh, equals to two in English. B joy raftan. We go to somewhere. Next one. Vali rablas on. Chon hava khubud. Be park raftim. Va yek saat qadam zadim. So again, bud. Raftim. Same one as these two. Now we have qadam zadan. Qadam, it means step. And then zadan to hit. So to hit your steps, you go for a walk. So the infinitive is qadam zadan. And also, the, these three sentences are very close to the English one. And the only thing that is different is like in English here, you in this part, you have an walked for an hour. Here you don't see the preposition for, but you can completely add it if you want. You can also say va baraye yek saat qadam zadim. But in English you can, you need to have it. In Farsi baraye is all the more optional. 
Next one بعد از آن خیلی گرسنه شدیم و به رستوران نزدیک پارک رفتیم و شام خوردیم. So we, we can replace that with either bad or sepas. And then here we have shodim, which the infinitive is shodan. Shodan means to become. And every time in English you want to say to get, meaning to become, for example, to get happy, to get sad, to, to get sick. Uh, the equivalent in Farsi would be shodan. In Farsi, we become. We become happy. We become sad. We become sick. Or in this case, to get hungry. In Farsi, we become hungry. And uh, the restaurant here, we need to have as of a restaurant nazdike park raftim. So the other infinitive raftan. Again, be jai raftan. Be. This is the jai, restaurant nazdike park. Va sham khordim, khordim. The infinitive is khordan. Next one, qaza khoshmaze bud. So this one is pretty easy. Bud comes from the infinitive budan again. And then khoshmaze. So khoshmaze, every time you see khosh attached to something, just know it has a positive connotation to it. For example, خوشحال. حال it means mood, state of being. So when خوش is attached to it, it means happy. Or خوشبخت. بخت is your is fortune, like you, not uh, money fortune, but like like your like a good fortune. So خوش is attached to it, so it means like fortunate. Or خوشانس. شانس is like luck. And then خوش before that, it means like lucky. Or another one, خوش رو. رو is face. So when خوش is attached to it, it means like someone who's nice. And in this case, خوش is attached to مزه. مزه means taste. So then it means delicious. All right, next one. بعد از اینکه شام خوردیم, again we have another خوردن. And then we have another رفتن. به سینما رفتیم و یک فیلم جدید دیدیم. And then دیدیم, the infinitive is دیدن. We can also say تماشا کردن. Like we can use the other verb for it. Now I, I am going to read this one more time, this time a little bit faster and a little bit more informal. This would be now a good listening practice. If you could just listen to me one more time, reading this faster and more informally. And after that, uh, I'm going to go through it again and see what uh, words changed into more informal forms. And then I'm going to give you a little bit more explanation about the informal language. And why we did this practice. دیروز شنبه بود. من و دوستام برای شام به رستوران رفتیم. ولی قبلش چون هوا خوب بود به پارک رفتیم و یه ساعت قدم زدیم. بعدش خیلی گرسنه شدیم. پس به رستوران نزدیک پارک رفتیم و شام خوردیم. غذا خوشمزه بود. بعد از اینکه شام خوردیم به سینما رفتیم و یه فیلم جدید دیدیم. All right, now let's go through it one more time and see uh, which one of the words uh, change in the spoken language. Let's start from here, diruz. Diruz shambe bud. Man va dost hayam. So this one changes to mano dostam. Because we said in the spoken language, we don't specifically pronounce va. Instead, we say mano. Imagine there's like a, a short vowel o on the letter before that. Again, it's implied. We don't write it down, but I'm just for just for you guys to know and see how it's being pronounced. Mano, and then dost hayam because we speak a little bit fast in the spoken language, so we don't specifically say like dost hayam, but instead we say dostam. Imagine not pronouncing he and not pronouncing ye. برای شام به رستوران رفتیم. ولی قبل از آن قبل از آن changes to قبلش. چون هوا خوب بود به پارک رفتیم و یه ساعت قدم زدیم. بعدش خیلی گرسنه شدیم. پس به رستوران نزدیک پارک رفتیم و شام خوردیم. غذا خوشمزه بود. بعد از اینکه شام خوردیم به سینما رفتیم و یه فیلم جدید دیدیم. 
So guys, I wanted to explain something about the informal language. If you are trying to learn the spoken language and you are trying to speak less formally, you do not need to do every little thing that we just did here. For example, if you say uh, yek instead of ye, nobody is going to think that you are speaking formally. What I am trying to do with this exercise is just to expose you to some of the words that we might pronounce differently in the spoken language. So when you hear them from a native person or from somewhere, you can at least understand the meaning of it. So it's really not black and white here. There is no rule as to whether you should completely speak formally or you should 100% speak informally. That is absolutely not, not the case. Uh, you can actually uh, use a mix of both formal and informal language. That's what I do. That's what a lot of native people do. And it sounds completely natural. But it would be really helpful if you try to become familiar with this in informal alternatives because they can really help you with your listening skills. I hope the first es essay wasn't too hard. We have another one. This one is a little bit longer. But if you are familiar with the verbs that are related to routines, then it would make this essay very easy. All right, let's start with the title. The title is Routine Sobhgahi. So routine is routine. And Sobhgahi, if we break it down, uh, we have Sob here for morning. Gah, gah is a suffix that is attached to some of the nouns for time and place. And then by adding e, it turns it into an adjectival noun. Um, this is the, the more linguistic explanation. If you guys um, don't understand it, don't worry about it. Just memorize the meaning. And for this essay, you need to know the present tense. Present tense, in case you don't remember, we need the prefix me or nemi for the negative. We need the present stem of the verb, which you just need to know them. You need to memorize them. And then we need the verb ending attached to the present stem. All right, and now let's just start the essay. So here is the essay. You can, we can do the same thing. You can read it with me and practice your reading skill, or you can listen to it and practice your listening skills. Uh, and after we are done reading, uh, we can take a look at the translation. So I'm going to start with the first sentence. هر روز من ساعت هفت صبح از خواب بیدار می شوم. اول تختم را مرتب می کنم. بعد صورتم را می شویم و مسواک می زنم. بعد از مسواک زدن لباس ورزشی می پوشم. سپس به آشپزخانه می روم و قهوه درست می کنم و اخبار روز را می خانم. ولی قبل از خواندن اخبار اول ایمیلم را چک می کنم. بعد از آن کیفم را بر می دارم، کفش هایم را می پوشم و از خانه بیرون می روم. سپس سوار ماشینم می شوم و به باشگاه می روم و برای یک ساعت ورزش می کنم. بعد از ورزش به خانه بر می گردم و دوش می گیرم و بعد صبحانه می خورم. در آخر ساعت نه صبح کارم را شروع می کنم. So here is the translation. You can find the sequencing words in red. If you have any questions or anything, we're going to go over them one by one, like sentence by sentence. And also I just wanted to show you here, imagine the sequencing words were not here. Then it would be just like a bunch of sentences, you know. Um, so these sequencing uh, words are important because uh, they can link the order of events to one another. That's why it's, it's important to learn them and to actually use them. Otherwise, it's just going to sound like a bunch of sentences next to each other. For those of you who need more help and more practice and have some questions, may, uh, let's go now sentence by sentence. Maybe that will answer some of your questions. All right, uh, let's start with the first sentence. Har roz man saat haft sob az khwab bidar mishavam. So here we need to have azafe saate and then haft sob. And also 
as خواب here which as is from or and خواب is sleep in English you don't need to say I wake up from sleep in Farsi we also do not need to say it but it's just a common thing to say it so maybe you can add it in there but if you do not say it it's it's perfectly fine all right so bidar mishavam it comes from the infinitive bidar shodan shodan the present stem is sho and then when we conjugate it it's going to be read as mishavam and the subject is man uh, next one, اول تختم را مرتب می کنم, بعد صورتم را می شویم و مسواک می زنم. So, uh, مرتب کردن is to tidy up. In English, you make your bed. In Farsi, we cannot use the verb to make, which is درست کردن in this context. In, this con in Farsi, we say we tidy up the bed. So, that would be مرتب کردن. So مرتب می کنم چیزی را because it's my bed I'm making it possessive so it will trigger را and then صورتم را می شویم so the verb the infinitive is شستن and then شو is the present stem and then a یه is added before the verb ending because this one is a long vowel so for the ease of pronunciation and then مسواك می زنم so مسواك زدن زن is a present stem and then in English, you need to say to brush my teeth. You need to say the word teeth. In Farsi, is already implied. We don't need to say my teeth. Next one. Uh, so, bad as mesvak zadan. So, bad as is a preposition. So, here we have the infinitive, which is the noun. And then, lebas se varzeshi mi pusham or lebas varzeshi mi pusham. As of here is between these two is optional. And mi pusham, the infinitive is pushidan. Push is the present stem. سپس به آشپزخانه می روم و قهوه درست می کنم و اخبار روز را می خانم. So here we can also say bad. And then می روم. رفتن is the present stem. Sorry. رفتن is the infinitive. Row is the present stem. And then to make something درست کردن. Con is the present stem. و اخبار روز را می خانم. So خاندن. And then it's cheesy را خاندن. And then here we read the news. So or the daily news. So, اخبار روز را می خانم. And here by daily, daily news, I'm not referring to like the magazine because there's like a news website or the magazine called daily news. By me, uh, by اخبار روز, I mean like the news of the day. Next one, ولی قبل از خاندن اخبار اول ایمیلم را چک می کنم. So here we have قبلاز as a preposition. That's why here we need to have infinitive or gerund. But this infinitive has a modifier is akhbar. So these two they need to connect it to each other with izafe. قبلاز خاندن اخبار. اول ایمیلم را چک می کنم. So چیزی را چک کردن. And here we're saying my email. So we will trigger را. بعد از آن کیفم را بر می دارم کفش هایم را می پوشم و از خانه بیرون می روم. So here we have an adverb and then the verb here is برداشتن. برداشتن. The present stem is, is dar. This is a compound verb. It's not a simple verb. Uh, and کیفم را. So I'm taking my back. So it will trigger را. And then کفشم را می پوشم. So the verb is پوشیدن. چیزی را پوشیدن. And the کفش هایم is possessive. So it will trigger را. And then از خانه بیرون می روم. So this one is رفتن. سپس سوار ماشینم می شوم و به باشگاه می روم و برای یک ساعت ورزش می کنم. So here again we can say bad. And then this verb. The verb to when you to get on something, for example, to get on an airplane, the train, your car, the bus. This is the verb we use. Savore cheesy shodan. The object comes between the non-verbal part and the verbal part, and they need to be connected with ezafe. So savore mashinam mashinam mishavam. So savor. This is the non-verbal part. And then shodan, we need to conjugate it. Mishavam. And then the object comes between these two. Vabe So, 
رفتن and then here the verb is ورزش کردن so I think this one is pretty clear next one بعد از ورزش به خانه برمیگردم so here برگشتن به جایی برگشتن به خانه جایی بود بی خانه و دوش میگیرم so دوش گرفتن گیر is the present stem و بعد صبحانه میخورم so خوردن خور is the present stem در آخر ساعت نه صبح کارم را شروع می کنم. So چیزی را شروع کردن. To start something. And something here we are saying my work. It's possessive so it will trigger را. Also we need to have اضافه here. So در آخر ساعت نه صبح. Another اضافه here. نه صبح کارم را شروع می کنم. Now I'm going to read this one more time. This time I'm going to read it faster and also more informally, like how we say it in the spoken language. This will be a great listening exercise if you could close your eyes or just um, or like look away uh, and just hear me um, reading this. Then you can like rate yourself and see how much you can understand. هر روز ساعت هفت صبح از خواب بیدار میشم. اول تختم و مرتب می کنم. بعد صورتم و میشورم و مسواک می زنم. بعد از مسواک زدن لباس ورزشی می پوشم. سپس باش پس خونه می رم و قهوه درست می کنم و اخبار روز رو می خونم. ولی قبل از خوندن اخبار اول ایمیلم رو چک می کنم. بعدش کیفم رو بر می دارم، کفشام رو می پوشم و از خونه بیرون می رم. سپس سوار ماشینم میشم و به باشگاه میرم و برای یه ساعت ورزش میکنم. بعد از ورزش به خونه برمیگردم و دوش میگیرم و بعد صبحونه میخورم. در آخر ساعت نه صبح کارم رو شروع میکنم. Now let's go over the changes for those of you who have watched my lessons, my previous lessons. You already kind of know and are familiar with uh, some of these changes. If you're watching for the first time, uh, like how things changes in the informal language and you don't understand a few stuff, just uh, let me know in the comment section and I will answer your question. Let's go over some of the changes that we use in the informal language. So I'm going to start from the beginning. Haruz man saat hafta sob as bidar mishavam. So mishavam in the spoken language changes to misham. So, از خواب بیدار میشم. اول تختم را مرتب می کنم. تختم را changes to either تختم مو or تختم رو. So, اول تختم مو مرتب می کنم or تختم رو. The same with this one. بعد صورتم را می شویم. So, صورتم را changes to either صورتم رو or صورتم مو. Me shuyam in the spoken language changes to me shuram. So it's kind of, it's, um, it, it sounds like we add a re in there, the letter re, which re is not part of the present stem, but in the spoken language for ease of pronunciation, we kind of add a re to it. So me shuram. And uh, the other one is here, miravam, be ashpaskhane miravam. So that changes to miram. And then here, remember, we have uh, va, va changes to o, so it's going to be read as be ashpaskhune miram o qahve dorost mikonam. Here, akhbar ruz ra mikonam, so ra changes to ro, akhbar ruz ro mikonam, and then mikonam changes to mikonam, so imagine this alif is not here, mikonam, akhbar ruz ro میخونم خواندن changes to خوندن ولی قبل از خوندن اخبار and then ایمیلم را changes to either ایمیلم مو or ایمیلم رو بعد از آن changes to بعدش بعدش and then کیفم را changes to either کیفم مو or کیفم رو بعدش کیفم رو برمیدارم کفش هایم را changes to کفشام رو why? Because let me change my pen. So here we don't really pronounce he here. We don't need this and ra becomes a u. 
sorry that was a very bad o o and then needs to be attached to she so kafshamo versus kafsh hayam ra and then khane changes to khune as khune birun miravam changes to miram as khune birun miram next one here mishavam changes to misham savar mashinam misham and then yek also if we speak fast we say ye yeah. uh, and then khane changes to khune again and then last one here karam ra it's either karamo or karam ro shuru mikonam بچه ها ما به انتهای درس امروز رسیدیم. Alright. So uh, we reached the end of this lesson. Uh, guys, if you liked it and you found it helpful, uh, please don't forget to like and maybe leave a comment and let me know. And also, uh, if you found this essay exercise helpful, please let me know in the comment sections and I, I can make more. I actually have different sort of essays that I always practice with my students in my classes so I can turn them into videos and publish it for you guys so you can also use them and practice your Farsi with them. All right, so ta kelas badi, fe'lan khodahafiz.